Alhamdulillah, we, uh, under the name of the Secretariat of Ulama, Assembly of Ulama uh, Asia, Shura, we have managed to arrive uh, in Turkey um, on the 8th of uh, October with a mission to discuss with um, some of the organization and uh, agencies of the government in Turkey on the situation at the border with Syria. And we had the opportunity to meet with our brothers uh, from the IHH, uh, a very big organization, a charity organization. And we, uh, uh, then we were brought to Ankara and we had a discussion with uh, Dr. Uh, Mustafa Kamalak, the president of the Saadat party. We also had some uh, discussion with uh, some organization who is doing work at the border. From Ankara, we, we flew to Antakya, where uh, we were given the opportunity to visit the uh, refugee camps in the district of Antakya. Now, district of Antakya was the first district that re the refugee came in June 2011. There are now uh, five camps um, with varying numbers of refugees from 1,500 to about 3,000. And uh, the camps are still uh, growing in numbers with the new refugees coming in because the situation is very fluid and it is increasing the tension between uh, Turkey and Syria. And we managed to go right deep inside, almost a few steps to cross over to Syria, but the, uh, um, uh, with the advice by the army of Turkey, they uh, said that it's very dangerous to go inside Syria. But we had the opportunity to arrive at a village uh, it's called Haja, um, Haji Pasha. That village uh, is now uh, hosting more than 2,000 refugees. Um, and uh, it is just uh, two kilometers uh, from uh, another um, small town within um, Syria which is called uh, Azamarin and also another village which is called a small town is called uh, Gurdush. Now we could witness on the day that we arrived uh, at that village a battle that was going on. We actually saw with our eyes um, explosions of bombs and mortars and shells and also uh, rattling of the guns. It went uh, more than uh, two to three hours and we were just looking at the, the scene and it was uh, very, very uh, serious. And um, the important thing is that um, these people who are, are facing this daily um, situation is definitely going to make the, the conflict much more longer to be resolved. Um, the young, uh, they call themselves the young Mujahideen from Syria cross over to Turkey and they arm themselves from Turkey and start going back uh, into Syria to fight and then they will come back uh, into the camp. So this is everyday uh, situation. Uh, but the sad thing is that the victims of the civilian families, children, women, old people uh, are in a situation that they, they need a lot of help. When we uh, visited one warehouse uh, uh, done by a local organization, the aid, humanitarian aid, things was from the U.S. It's called the Mercy U.S. Uh, there are a few organizations that is helping the, the refugees. 
uh, one is called the IHH and then we have Mercy US and then there is uh, Zakat Foundation, another is Human Appeal. Some of these are already established for some time in the camps, but when I spoke to them, the aid are still not enough. Especially with another three weeks from now, um, winter is going to, to come and they need a lot of uh, blankets, uh, a lot of uh, even food. Food is not enough. Um, so we, we had, had a discussion with them what is the real situation of the humanitarian aid. Um, and then we were able to visit the hospital where all the wounded people uh, from within Syria was brought in into Turkey. They established a specific um, hospital which is manned by the Syrian uh, medical doctors uh, organization. Um, the, this this um, uh, hospital is situated within the district uh, in a small town called Rahanli. This, the Rahanli is a small town where the hospital has been enacted to accommodate these wounded people. And we saw a lot of wounded people, uh, decapitated uh, people because of shells and bombs. Uh, and it looks very, very difficult because there is only five doctors volunteer doctors in that hospital it is receiving between seven to ten cases of wounded people every day now the situation is uh, is uh, complicated uh, because uh, as time goes by this uh, friction between the community uh, of the very refugees and also the uh, people within the turkey uh, area or the turkey border uh, we have like 30 percent Sunni Arab and Sunni Turkish and then we have 30 percent uh, uh, Alawi uh, Turkish uh, they have now uh, a tension between this because the refugees who says that the Sunni uh, people in Syria are being slaughtered by the Alawit and therefore the Alawit in Turkish cannot be spared and we have to also uh, uh, target these people because they have killed our people inside Syria. So now the government of Turkey has got to make sure that there is a segregation between the uh, people of Turkey and also uh, the refugees because of this friction. And uh, we also witnessed um, this particular action by the Turkish uh, government who has forced the uh, civilian flight from Moscow uh, by the Syrian uh, civilian uh, plane um, alleging that uh, the plane is carrying uh, arms or, or materials that can, can be used uh, as arms uh, into Damascus and uh, that is why Syria has uh, forced the civilian plane to land in Ankara and now the tension is growing because the Syrian are saying that Turkish is is doing something uh, wrong uh, and Turkish says that you know we cannot allow any civilian plane to cross our airspace and then to bring arms into Syria uh, again that has complicated the situation Turkey is very annoyed Syria is very angry and now there is a voice from even Russia because Russia is angry with Turkey now. Why, why is Turkey uh, forcing the plane to, to land? Another complicated situation is also uh, where the, the um, Syrian uh, government Bashar is accusing that Turkey is arming the refugees uh, to go back into Syria and fight against uh, Bashar's army. And because of that, Bashar says that we are trying to arm the Kurdish, the Kurdish uh, rebellions to fight against Turkey. And these elements of uh, using all these, uh, these reasons to, to heighten the, the conflict between Tur Turkey and Syria is going to make this conflict much more longer and it will be very difficult. Um, uh, the way that I see it in my analysis with all the discussion I, I have made 
there are at least three countries that is very vital to to see the uh, how to resolve this conflict one is uh, saudi number two is turkey and number three is iran if these three countries can sit down and 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 work out how to resolve i think uh, there will be a chance uh, for us to uh, see some some at least um, a ceasefire at least then there will be no more uh, civilians being killed uh, but of course uh, Bashar is going to drag other Western forces to come into the the war uh, he's trying to drag Russia to come he's trying to uh, drag NATO to come into the war uh, the US uh, and of course this again will be uh, will be de devastating if this is allowed um, Shura has a position that we whatever it is we have to make sure that this uh, civilian death should be stopped should be um, if it is not stopped minimized there must be a, a resolution to at least discuss how there's uh, how this this conflict uh, can be overcome um, if we only make um, uh, statements of um, uh, supporting um, one side and against another, it, it is not going to solve the solution, uh, the, the problem. What we need now is to see how can there be a dialogue between interest parties, um, at least within the people, between the, the government and also the rebellions, and uh, if there is uh, a chance where uh, the conflict can be reduced, it would be much, much better. But again, the actors from outside of Syria, uh, which is now been alleged, uh, is uh, assisting uh, on each side, uh, Saudi and, uh, and Turkey and Iran having their differences. That again has to be uh, resolved by another discussion. And we hope that um, the situation in uh, Syria would not uh, ultimately benefit the enemies of the Ummah, uh, yani, uh, the Israelis and the US, because they are now waiting. If everything is being destroyed in Syria, it will be another Iraq, where everything will be finished and ultimately uh, US will get the benefit out of this conflict. That is the why uh, uh, Shura is very concerned and we are trying to see whether there is any opportunity for us to send him within eight, uh, at least uh, within the next two, three weeks because the situation is very bad and there's an increasing number of refugees. And that's how we hope that the Ummah can understand the urgency of the situation in Syria. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.